What's going on boys, girls, friends, family, and anime manga lovers? Um, this is my first video on this channel. My name is Quinn Giles, and um, I'm going to be reviewing Dragon Ball Super Chapter 15. Um, I love manga, I love anime. I actually haven't read too much of them, but the ones that I have read, I've probably read about 10 mangas and same amount of animes, you know? The ones that I have read and watched I have a really strong passion for, and I'd like to start reading more and stuff. So. I decided to start reviewing them because, you know, a lot of people in my daily life, they're not big anime fans, they're not, they're not big, you know, manga fans, so I decided I can rant here and give my opinions and, you know, maybe start little anime debates on here as well. I think that'd be really fun, so, uh, let's get her started. So, Dragon Ball Super Chapter 15, what did I think about it? Well, first of all, it was a good chapter. But there was one thing in the chapter that just pissed me off. It didn't make any sense at all, and uh, it honestly ruined the whole chapter for me. Um, one more thing, I guess, before I get really into the review here is that I like to consider myself a huge Dragon Ball fan. Dragon Ball is what got me into uh, anime and manga, and I liked Dragon Ball before I even really liked anime and manga. I watched it a lot growing up. I have all the mangas and stuff, so I like to think I know, you know, about, like, you know, the character strength and power levels and who's the strongest and all that stuff. And, um, yeah, so the reason why I'm telling you that I like to think that I'm a huge fan is if I get bitchy and complain about little chapters and stuff, and go in, you know, whiny bitch mode, it's because I'm a huge fan. It's because I love Dragon Ball. So when they make a mistake, it, it kind of, or I, I guess make a mistake or do something that kind of I think is dumb, um, it's going to make me more mad because um, I'm going to be more of a critic because I just love the show and, you know, Dragon Ball is just not something you mess up. Not at all. So, anyways, let's get started. So chapter 15, how did it start? It started with Trunks versus Blackarot, is what I like to call him. Goku Black, Blackarot. And um, Trunks started fighting him, and long story short, he got his ass whooped. He tried to go Super Saiyan 2 and fight him, and he held his own for a little bit, I guess. And Blackarot wasn't really going hard, but he held his own for a little bit, went Super Saiyan 2, and he got his ass beat. Um... One thing that I did like about this chapter over the manga, and by the way, I do. I think the Dragon Ball Super manga is better than the anime. The only thing I find about the anime is that the fighting's kind of slow, the art is kind of bad, and um, one thing I do like about the show though is that they have like their uh, the anime, I guess. They have uh, they're like you know they're like chill times where it just shows everybody relaxing and hanging out. That's pretty cool. I like that stuff. But overall, I like the manga better. So, Trunks is fighting Blackarot, and he's getting his butt kicked. He goes Super Saiyan 2. Drew Super Saiyan 2 really good in the manga. Um, in the anime, you couldn't really tell the difference between Super Saiyan 1 and 2, and that kind of pissed me off. We'll get more into that later. And he got his ass kicked, and he was about to leave, but all of a sudden he shot a beam into the ground, made a smoke cloud, got into his time machine, and got away. And Goku Black was sitting there like, what the hell? As soon as he found his key, he was about to go and get Trunks, and he shot a beam at him, was going to kill Trunks and the time machine. And boop, there he goes, back to the past. Trunks going back to the past. Fucking love it. That's what I loved about this chapter. That's one thing I loved about Super. They brought back future Trunks. Now, I'm sure a lot of people are saying that it's very generic because I'm sure a lot of fan mangas and a lot of cool fan stuff have Trunks coming back to the past because people just love the character, right? And a lot of people are like, all right, he had his time to shine. Let's just leave it, right? But no, nah, I thought it was cool that they brought him back. Um, you know, and he doesn't really have anything in the future either. I mean, um,. It's assumed that his girlfriend was killed. It's assumed that, uh, you know, Mai's girlfriend was killed and Bulma was killed as too, his mom. So he doesn't really have much. Um, whether he goes back or not, he probably will. But uh, it's cool that he came back, so that's awesome. So when he comes back to the, uh, I guess, the present, shall I say, um, Goku and Vegeta are fighting and Beerus and Whis are just sitting there hanging out, chilling, just doing their own thing, eating. And all of a sudden, uh, Trunks appears in the time machine. He's injured, so Goku's like, well, I'm going to go to Karen's, or Korin's, whether he's an in the anime, he was named uh, Korin. In the uh, anime, the manga that I have, his name is Karen. Goku goes to Karen's tower and meets up with Karen and Yajirobe. Now, I absolutely loved how they brought these characters back. Uh, Karen and Yajirobe, I really like them. Uh, Karen's a strong dude. Um, he was stronger than Goku when Goku first met him, and he trained him at the top of, the, at his, at the top of his tower. And um, he also trained Master Roshi, and uh, yeah, so he's a strong, nice uh, character, and I'm glad they brought him back, because you hardly ever see uh, Karen anymore, so awesome to bring him back. And they also brought back Yajirobe. They were uh, they're both sitting there at the tower playing Twister, which was a little odd, but whatever, right? Who cares? What else are they going to do? They, I don't know. What did they do up at that tower just sitting up there anyways? There's not much room. 
But yeah, so they're up there, and um, it was really cool. I loved how they brought them back. Um, we all forget about Yair Jarobi. Uh, Yair Jarobi saved the planet a couple times. Well, he saved uh, he saved the whole planet by cutting Vegeta's tail off. If Vegeta would have stayed as a great ape in, in the Sand Saga, fuck, we, everyone would have been doomed. So he's, he, even though he's a bit of a coward, he has saved the world. Um, I guess that's probably the only time he saved the world. I don't know. But um, anyways, um, one thing that people forget too, a cool fact, is that Yair Jarobi... A lot of people are going to disagree with me, but he was about as strong, if not stronger, than TN when he was first introduced. That's one thing to remember. Anyways, um, comment below on how you don't agree with it, because I know if this video gets any views or any attention, people are going to say, what the hell? Your Jarobi was stronger than TN? That's not right. He was. I'll get onto that more later. I'm rambling off. So um, Goku comes back with the Sensu Beans, gives one to Trunks, brings him back. Trunks goes to punch Goku right in the face because obviously he doesn't know. And I, I totally forgot about this, but they mentioned it in the manga. Trunks had no way of knowing that uh, Goku would have been revived by uh, old Kai. Because um, as soon as he left, he knew Goku wasn't coming back. So he thought Goku was Blackarot and he went to go punch him. And Goku blocked it like, what? What's going on here? So that was cool. Now, um, Trunks and uh, Goku decide to spar. And, um, oh, and uh, let me get one more thing. Before they sparred, um, Trunks meets Kid Trunks. Future Trunks meets Kid's Trunk. Future Trunks meets Kid Trunks. I thought that was really, really cool how that happened because think about how I always thought about how cool it would be. Um, Kid Trunks meeting Future Trunks and it finally happened. And I hope they elaborate on it more and I hope they get more char character development later. I hope they talk and, you know, figure out uh, more about each other and get like their own moment because I, I wanted to see more of this, right? It was kind of short, but it was really cool how Trunks is like literally just this guy's me. What the hell? Like, he was he was shocked. It was really cool. So, what was going on to there? Um, Goku and uh, Trunks, future Trunks and Goku, of course, start fighting. Now, in the anime, they uh, both went Super Saiyan 2, and they didn't draw Super Saiyan 2 right, and that pissed me right off. They looked like they were both Super Saiyan 1. I always wanted to see what future Trunks Super Saiyan 2 would look like, and they didn't draw future Trunks looking like... He, he looked like a Super Saiyan, and Goku looked like a Super Saiyan, and they both said that they were Super Saiyan 2. Didn't make sense. Pissed me off. In the manga, they fixed it. Trunks' Super Saiyan 2 looked really cool. You could tell it was different. His hair was more spiky. He had no bangs in his face. They all spiked up. And Goku Super Saiyan 2, whoever actually you know, knows Dragon Ball quite well, they know the difference between Goku Super Saiyan and Super Saiyan 2, even though it looks similar. They drew Goku Super Saiyan 2 really, really well. And I really like that. Um, I don't know. They just, they just drew it really... It just looked really nice. He had that like more of an aggressive look. His hair was more spiky. And he kind of... He just looked like a, it was just really good drawing. So whoever did the art, I'm sorry, I don't even know who does the art for this. I don't know your name, but really good job. Like Super Saiyan 2 Goku looked friggin' phenomenal in this chapter. But here's the spot that really, really, really pissed me off. So they were sparring, and Trunks was holding his own. He was doing really well. And then all of a sudden, Goku said, Hey, I'm going to show you a transformation that you don't even know of yet. And then, boom, goes Super Saiyan 3, which was cool. Now, let's go to the anime for a second. In the anime, he did the same thing. He went Super Saiyan 3, and Goku sad Trunks coming at him with his sword out, and Goku caught his sword, boink, just like this, right between his fingers, and then he owned Su uh, Future Trunks, which is the way it should have gone, and it was really, really well, other than the, dr the drawings of Super Saiyan 2 not doing good. That's something I'm going to give to the, an the anime props for, because Super Saiyan 3 Goku should demolish Super Saiyan 2 Trunks. Now here's what really pissed me off. I'm gonna get, I'm getting mad now. You can tell. I'm not really that mad, but I'm just you know I'm elaborating. I gotta show how I feel about this, right? Super Saiyan 2 Trunks and Super Saiyan 3 Goku in the manga. Trunks goes, well, he's surprised, but he goes, well, I never, I never ever seen this form before. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna go Super Saiyan 2 and power up to my full power. And as soon as this happened, Vegeta said, oh my god. Trunks is almost as strong as Goku in his Super Saiyan 3 form. Then all of a sudden, Goku, you know, kind of just tensed up. Trunks was charging towards him. Boom! Trunks got a kick to the back of the head, and the fight was over. And Vegeta goes, what? Goku, that dirty bastard, or shall I say, he said Kakarot, that dirty bastard. He went to his god form for a split second and kicked Trunks and went out. And that really fucking pissed me off. There's a lot of things that don't make sense now. I'm a huge Dragon Ball Z fan, like I said, I've already mentioned it before. Um, wouldn't Goku not want to uh, make the fight a challenge instead of beating him with one hit? The way I see it, the Goku that I like to think that I know from the mangas and stuff, 
He wouldn't have powered even into a Super Saiyan 3. He would have stayed Super Saiyan 2 and drove the fight out, just like he did with Majin Vegeta, right? He would have drove the fight out and let it go on. And, um, yeah, and he would have beat Trunks eventually. But here's, and here's the thing that doesn't make sense. So, first of all, that pissed me off how Goku went right into Super Saiyan God. He stepped up two transformations, and it's like... That, that just pissed me off. He should have stayed Super Saiyan 2. But another thing that doesn't make any sense at all to me, why the hell was Future Trunks as strong as Super Saiyan 3 or almost as strong as Super Saiyan 3 Goku? It doesn't make any sense. And that's what pissed me off. Like, did, did, they, did they not, make, did they not like, think about this at all? Like, okay, let's think about it for a minute. So Trunks killed Deborah. That was fucking cool. We figured that out. And that's another thing we found in the chapter. And I thought that was really amazing how they said that. Um, Kibito Kai, or shall I say, you know, Kaoshin, or whatever you want to call him. Uh, they both fought against Deborah and they ended up winning. And so maybe Trunks had training with Supreme Kai that would have made him a lot stronger. That could have happened. So that's cool, right? But there is no way that future Trunks should have been as strong as Super Saiyan 3 Goku. Let's say we take Goku from the Boo Saga. So we have Boo Saga Goku, right as he beat Kid Boo. I could maybe understand Super Saiyan 2 Trunks being on par with Super Saiyan 2 Goku then. Goku trained seven years in the afterlife, so he got a lot stronger. And he also, and he trained, you know, for that seven years. So, and Trunks was, you know, in the future by himself. He had no one to train with other than uh, Supreme Kai, if he even did that. So, now we have... Super Saiyan 2 Trunks and Super Saiyan 2 Goku. They should be on even terms. They, uh, Future Trunks has no reason to be stronger than Super Saiyan 3 Goku. But what doesn't make any sense to me is that Goku trained for three years. Three fucking years in the hyperbolic time chamber. He also got that boost from using Super Saiyan God against Beerus. And he's also trained with Beerus and Reese. Did I just say Reese? I meant Whis. Reese's name is my dog. So... What doesn't make sense is that Goku should be phenomenally stronger than Future Trunks. In my opinion, base Goku should be able to go fight on par with Super Saiyan 2 Trunks, no problem. If he used his full power in base form, I think I think Goku should at least be able to fight Super Saiyan 2 Trunks on par. And if not, he can power up into Super Saiyan and then beat him that way. And if worse came to worse, if Super Saiyan 2 Goku... Or sorry, if Super Saiyan 1 Goku couldn't fight Super Saiyan 2 Future Trunks, then he could have went Super Saiyan 2 and beat Future Trunks' ass. With all that training that Goku got, and with the Super Saiyan God power-up that he got in Battle of God, and with the training with Beerus and the cheer training with Whis, there is no, absolute no reason why Trunks should have been as strong as Super Saiyan 3 Goku. It doesn't make any sense. Comment below if you agree or don't agree. I want to know what you guys think about this. If, there's a, if this video gets any attention, I want to know. Because it doesn't make any sense to me. And then Goku had to go Super Saiyan God to beat him. Well, he didn't have to, but he wanted to finish it quick, which is not the Goku I know it would do. So he went, boom, Super Saiyan God and kicked him. Doesn't make sense. It does not make any sense at all that Future Trunks should be on par with Super Saiyan 3 Goku after all his training with Whis and after all his training with Beerus and after three years in the Hyperbolic Time Chamber training with Vegeta. It doesn't make sense. He should not have been near Goku's strength. So if you think about it that way, if Goku, or not sorry, if you think about it that way, you know, their power levels, if Trunks gets Super Saiyan God, he's going to be way stronger than Goku and Vegeta because he's stronger as a his Super Saiyan 2 form is as strong as Super Saiyan 3 Goku. So if he powers up into Super Saiyan 3 or Super Saiyan God, he's going to be stronger than everyone. And it doesn't make sense because he's never had any of that training. <sighs> it just... It just didn't, it just doesn't make any sense. It honestly just does not make any sense. But that's my rant. So yeah, that really pissed me off. And um, so the fight ends with uh, Super Saiyan God, uh, Goku kicking Trunks in the back of the head and ending him. Sh uh, knocked him out, which was greasy. Goku normally wouldn't have did that, nor I don't think he would ever have to, but it happened. Um, we figure out that in the future, um, you know, Beers is asking, why, why doesn't the God of Destruction just go and kill this guy? Why is he letting him go crazy? And it turns out when uh, Supreme Kai, or shall I say Kaoshin, he died fighting Devorah. And um, Beerus gets right angry. And it's like, well, you know, why was he so angry? And Whis says, and this is where the chapter ends, right on this panel, the Kaoshin, or Supreme Kai's life, is linked to the God of Destruction. So that's really cool. Their lives are linked, like uh, Kami and Piccolo. So right now, we, if I was to go ahead and... Uh, if we were to go ahead and kill uh, Supreme Kai, Beerus would die as well. So that's, that's pretty cool. Um... So yeah, I wonder how that's going to add to the storyline. Um, overall, the chapter was good. Um, 
No, no, it wasn't good, actually. Um, I just think the Trunks should have to train with Goku and Vegeta before he can get, you know, on that kind of level with them, right? You know? But, uh, anyways, that's pretty much it. Um, that's my first chapter review. I'll try to do a better one, you know, maybe more editing or something. I don't know. I feel like this was just kind of thrown together. But I just wanted to get my opinion out there on the chapter and, you know, get a little rant out. So, if you like this video, um... Just uh, show me by leaving a comment, or if you want to just comment on something you didn't agree with, with me saying, you know, you don't think Yardrobe was strong as Tien when the when they when Yardrobe was first introduced. Comment below. Let me know. You know, if you if you if you liked how strong Future Trunks was, tell me, and uh, I'll reply to the comment. And uh, I hope to be releasing more videos soon. So, anyways, have a great day and uh, take her easy. Bye bye.